Hi, my name is Paul Brooks. And I'm Mike Hayes. Welcome to Beat Movie Mania. We got a very, very special episode tonight. Mike, tell us about it. Space! We all need it. We don't like people close to us. We want to have room. But that's not what we're watching tonight. We're outer talking about space. actual outer space. Yeah. Outer space. Out of the earth! I love outer space. Do you? Oh yeah, I've been watching sci-fi movies and TV shows since I was a little kid, since I was like three. Like three years old? Yeah. That's pretty young. I love sci-fi. Me too. That's really what we're talking. We're watching some space movies tonight. We're watching some mm -hmm. sci-fi movies mm -hmm. tonight. Mm -hmm. Love up, it. Up first, the fourth in a franchise. Not a good franchise. <laughs> Something called... Oh, sorry, the library card fell oh, out. Boy. We'll just stick this over here. A little something we like to call Leprechaun 4 in space. I would love to have given this movie some space. <laughs> this movie needs some space. It is... The point of the Leprechaun movies, if I understand it right, is that he is a guy... And is and when someone well he's a leprechaun oh well, yeah he's a little leprechaun he's a little guy leprechaun yeah when someone messes with him his wrath is unending right and he just messes with him just the whole leave time. him alone just don't mess with him yeah but everyone does at least everyone in these movies and so for this leprechaun four in space some <laughs> we jump cut into. Some space princess yeah. in a space asteroid. He has already captured her. Mm -hmm. None of it makes sense. Good evening. Well, you know, this movie, I mean, look, everybody knows about this movie. I think it's it's generally considered to be at least in the running for one of the worst movies ever made. And I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, but man, like by the end of this thing, I was like, I need help, you know? Because yeah. it's it's rough, it's rough yeah, it stuff. Is. First of all, let's just, let's just, let's talk about the elephant in the room here. The Special effects for the spaceships and everything that is in outer space. I could hire a third grader to just like hop onto a computer and just do whatever, and it would be better than this stuff. They clearly just didn't care. But how much more is it? How much more do you think it is to have a CGI'd uh, uh, spaceship instead of a model? Well, like it can't be in that much more. Even a, even a crappy model where you see the strings hanging out. Like it all it is, you just have to. It would have been better. It would have been better. Yeah. Like if you. It was so bad. It was really bad. There was literally no texture to the spaceships. There, it was just lines. It was weird. That was really just one of the terrible things about this movie. Let's get into some of the other stuff. I don't know if you'll take issue with this, but I'm just going to come out and say it. Leprechaun has... A lightsaber in this movie. Yes, he does. Or a light shillelagh. I don't know what that is. It's, it's a lightsaber. It's the little stick he's got. Okay, yeah. but there's a thing that comes yeah, out of it. it. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I get it. It's a sci-fi movie. It's a space movie. 
but it's like, supposed to be silly too. I mean, it's it's got a tongue in cheek kind of factor to it. But I think this whole franchise has that sort of tongue in cheek. Look at us, we're being so kind of witty and funny, mm -hmm. but it's a horror movie, which just to me makes it not a whole lot of fun. It's it, he's over the top. Freddy Krueger will say some things. He mm -hmm. has some witticism to him, but it's kept to. Limit. Yeah, this is Leprechaun just, is just every chance, every single every second. Every second he's on screen, he's just cheesing for the camera. Oh, smashing! Simply smashing, falling. Literally, I, I think he breaks the fourth wall. I think it's debatable. But he will turn and he will like say things and he's like almost looking at the he's camera. He's talking to himself, but he's like walking towards the camera kind right. of a thing. It's weird. Yeah. He's breaking the fourth wall. Yeah, it's, almost. It's very close. It's ridiculous. Death and destruction are my game. Agony is my name. <laughs> Can we talk about the makeup though in this movie? Mm -hmm. the, I feel the one good thing about this film is the makeup effects. Okay, let's talk it's, about it. There was a gentleman who was just shoulders up in a robot machine. Sure. And uh, while necessarily the, the, the parts that were nailed to the machine for some reason that didn't look super convincing, yeah. you couldn't see at any point where his, like, there was no line. Right. So, I am not what you expected. No matter. Don't look quite so horrified, Doctor. I'm still the same seductively brilliant and powerful man I was before. There is also a very interesting scene where I'm not sure how I'm going to say this. Leprechaun is reborn via mm. coming out of a man's... Penis? Penis. Yeah. It's a thing that happens in the movie. Ah! Ah! Like, he, he can regenerate from any part of his body. He exploded multiple times in the movie. Yeah. And he'd come out of his foot later on, or whatever. But the first time you see him regenerate is when a soldier who, who killed him, apparently, with a grenade yeah. is peeing on him. And then some sort of weird giggling vapor goes up into his crotchal area. <laughs> Pure Rocky Mountain spring water. <laughs> Death from above. Let it rain! <laughs> and then later, Paul. Uh, he's hanging out with a very attractive young lady trying to, trying to do his thing with her. Uh, and things go pretty horribly wrong. Yeah. Horribly wrong. like they were making up so much of this as they went along that y you sort of lose your investment in it pretty pretty quickly you he can't die like right. he dies within 10 minutes in the movie It really kind of kills the tension yeah. or any sort of situation. You, you have to have some sort of stakes. And yeah. If there's no, if if you know that, regardless of what happens, he's going to come back. That kind of kills the stakes, really. Yeah. So that's that was. I was disappointed. I really wanted to like this movie because I had heard that you know it's one of the worst movies ever made, and I was really looking forward to getting into it. But mm. I'm telling you, by the end of it, when he like grows into a giant leprechaun which you knew was going to happen of at some course. point. Of 
Boy, did you shoot him with steroids? I was just um, ready for bed. <laughs> yeah, no, fair enough. In, in an attempt to make this movie better. Yeah. WWLD. Here's the thing about Lorenzo. Smart guy. Uh-huh. Real smart guy. He's right behind your head. I don't know if you guys can see that, but he's right behind Mike's head right there. Smart guy. Got some guns on him, too. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Lorenzo probably, in, in the world of the Leprechaun franchise, in the Leprechauniverse, if you will, he probably would have been offered this assignment where he's on this spaceship and they have this mission, right? But again, he's a smart guy. He'd probably be like, he'd probably listen to the offer and then he would go, oh, I'm going to pass. And he'd stay on Earth and go to like a convention and sign some autographs and things like that. So I think Lorenzo would just steer clear of the entire situation. <laughs> Stay at home. Mm-hmm. So I think he's probably just sitting at home. You know, he might put in a phone call or something, a space phone call, to say, listen, I heard about this space mission. I got a bad feeling about it. Watch out for Leprechaun. And then maybe things would go better. Sure. But that's, that's just my take on things. What about you? What do you think uh, Lorenzo would do uh, for Leprechaun 4? What I think Lorenzo would do when faced with the Leprechaun 4 was he'd fly on a space hog, mm. bust through the airlock, tassels flowing in the wind, yeah. and he'd just fly down the hallways, and he, he'd, he'd skid around, maybe like, like tail butt the, the Leprechaun, <laughs> kick him across the way with his tail, and then just pulled out a sawed-off shotgun, just boosh! Just shoot the leprechaun right in the chest. And then wow. the leprechaun, as we know, regenerates, right? Right. Here's what would happen. I think Lorenzo would pee on his body. <laughs> Uh-oh. And then the leprechaun goes up, does his thing. But then Lorenzo would just pee him out into space. <laughs> and then he got it. <laughs> he wins. Pee leprechaun. Yep. Wow. Good. Yeah, I, I like your take on it. Thank I you. would actually really like to see that movie because... Uh, l- Let's face it, Lorenzo makes any movie a lot more interesting. Any movie he's in is amazing. And that's what Lorenzo Lamas would do. That's right. What do you rate this movie, Leprechaun 4, in space? Four. (laughs) Uh, Paul, what do you rate Leprechaun 4? Tough call. This is a tough call. There were things in it that I enjoyed. Sure. There were things in it that I did not enjoy. Sure. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be somewhat generous here. I'm also going to give it a four, but I'm going to do it on these two fingers, and I'm going to go like this, which is kind of like like that. Like a gang symbol? No, like this. See? He's like... Yeah. So you're just rating off of box covers now. Yeah. Yeah. You know what might make this movie a little bit better? What? I don't know. If we, if we, if we had some sort of food that we were eating while we were watching it, which we didn't well, like, do. Like a leprechaun food? Yeah, well, I mean, like, what... I guess what I'm trying to say is, let's throw it to our man in the kitchen, Mike Hayes, for a very special treat. I think you guys are going to enjoy this a lot. Mm. (laughs) That's me. Listen, when you're watching space movies, you got to eat space food. Tonight, we're having space beef stew. Here's how you do it. You need three cups of water. You gotta bring it to a boil. So we go to here and we turn it into the bucket. That's called a pot. Turn on the heat, get it boiling. While that's boiling, it's gonna take a minute. Let's make some pudding. For pudding, you need half a cup of cold water with your space sauce. And you pour it in and you stir until it's nice and creamy. Let's get it nice and stirred. Nice and creamy. 
All right, that'll do it. Now, let's put it in the fridge because revenge is a dish best served cold. Also pudding. All right, now our boiled water should be ready to go. So let's get it and make this sauce. We got a bag of dehydrated corn. You pour it into a bowl. You need to add one quarter cup of boiling water to it. So we add that to the bowl and to the second bowl. We've got our beef stew. Pour that into a bowl. You need to add one and one quarter cup of water to each bowl. So grab it, one quarter each. Now we go for the big cup, the big one. Pour it in. Pour it in. A little bit more for each one. Ah, let's just, let's just. And now you wait, just like in space. Mike, this looks scrumptious. Are you ready? Oh, yes. Let's try it. Mm, beef stew, space beef stew. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh, no. Wow. Oh, no. Let's it's, just say it's an acquired taste. It was terrible. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. No. Oh, God, it's like dog, it tastes like dog food. Let's try the corn. All right. Listen, you gotta understand, astronauts <laughs> are up there and they don't have the options that we have down here. Sometimes this is what they have to do. Yeah. It's for, you know, it's for their country. Try this corn. Corn isn't good, but it's better than the stew. Try it. That's worse than this. No way! Here, try my corn. I got corn in my mouth. Try my corn. I'm cold. Well, yeah. Cold space corn. Mmm. Mmm. You try the pudding? We have pudding? Yeah. Pudding. Where's mine? I don't know. You can have some of mine. Okay, you try it first. I have a mouthful of corn. Hurry up with the corn. I, All right. I found I found my pudding. Alright. We gotta try it. Well, no, I just got the corn in my cheeks like a well, chipmunk. No, get rid of the corn. It's gonna take forever. Why? Because you know how slow I eat. Just eat faster. I have the corn All in right. my cheeks. Let's do the pudding. Alright. It's the best of the three. It is, but it's not great. Well, it's not. It's weirdly textured. Well, whether we like it or not, this is dinner for us, so. Yeah. Let's just keep going. Uh huh. And we have another movie to talk about. Mm hmm. One that we watched. Uh, <clears throat> it, was, it was a movie that was a thing. Yeah. It happened. People made it, people starred in it. There we go. A little something we like to call Space Hunter. Adventures in the Forbidden Zone. Starring Peter Strauss and one Molly Ringwald. A young Molly Ringwald. Very young. To be perfectly honest, this movie came out in two, nope. Not 2000 something. It doesn't say. Oh, it's on the front. 1983. Mm -hmm. Space Hunter Adventures in the Forbidden Zone. Um, Mike, tell us about it. Well, it's a movie, I feel, if someone <laughs> described to you everything that happens in it. There's 
Mad Max style cars. Yes. There's aliens. There's fire, there's explosions. All sorts of stuff. There's a bunch of stuff going on, a bunch of crazy stuff. Guess what? None of as good. much as it sounds amazing, it's boring. None of it's good. It's a snooze fest. <laughs> yeah. It really it. is, right? That's it. Like, it's baffling because written on paper, this movie sounds great. Right. Molly Ringwald plays a young uh, scavenger. Why can't I come with you? Because it's dangerous and I don't want you to get hurt. Really? And. And it's just boring. Yeah. First of all, we wanted to do a space-themed episode mm -hmm. for B Movie Mania, and this movie is called Space Hunter: Adventures in the Forbidden Zone. I yeah. think, to me, I, I was thinking that the Forbidden Zone was going to be sort of like in Star Trek, where you have the neutral zone. I thought that that's what was going on, but it turns out that. You know, really only about 5% of this movie actually takes place in space. It's on ground. The spaceship blows up and like a pod ejects from it, right? Yeah. They land on this planet, and I don't know if you remember, but they take off like their helmets so easily. They're like just barely like positioned on top of their mm -hmm. heads and they just sort of like take them off in the most unconvincing fashion possible. You will now remove your helmets. Please stay by your shuttle and take a few moments to relax. You will be given further instructions in a short time. Like yeah. that wasn't protecting anything. No, it was doing nothing. Yeah. So right off the bat, we're off to a bad start. But there were things about this movie that was just really just off. For instance, the music. Oh man, I wanted to talk about the music. There was really dramatic music playing mm -hmm. when nothing was happening. And then when something dramatic was happening, no music. <laughs> it didn't make sense. Yeah. Every time. Oh. It, it's baffling. It throws you off. It really does. It makes you, it takes you out of the movie. And then Molly Ringwald shows up. And I like Molly Ringwald. I don't have any sort of problem sure. with her. But for whatever reason, maybe it's because she was so young in this movie, she shows up and to me, she's just the most grating, irritating character. Mm. She's just yelling and complaining about everything. What the hell are you? What do you think I am, you scrawny nerd bag? I'm a woman! An earther! You better not skiz my home or I'll get my father to split your face! Peter Strauss is like... 40 in this. Yeah. And Molly Ringwald's like 15. Oh, if that. But their relationship is like... straddling this line mm -hmm. between like father-daughter relationship and like love interest. Yeah, it doesn't quite make it obvious which one it is. And that's what is kind of really disturbing about it. Yeah, it's like, yo, what's going on here? Yeah. Partners, we ain't. You track me to the zone, I give you food. And that's it. I do want you to come. There's a weird scene where he makes her like take a bath in like a pond. Because mm -hmm. she's really dirty. Yeah. I'm not a scam, I'm an earther! Maybe now you gotta smell like one. Are you doing that because you think of her as sort of like a daughter, or like, or do you want to see her naked? You know? It's, it's just a, a it's a, weird. It's a weird vibe. Well, sounds like you don't agree with what 
these people were doing in this film. I would say that that would be an accurate statement. Well, how about this? Tell me this. What would Lorenzo do? Lorenzo who? Lorenzo Lamas. Oh my gosh. Here's the thing, Mike. Mm-hmm. Lorenzo, real no-nonsense sort of guy, okay? Mm -hmm. First of all, he wouldn't be pulling any of this I can't tell whether or not I'm interested in a 15-year-old Molly Ringwald type situation. <laughs> he, he would say, listen, young young lady, mm -hmm. put on your clothes. She have, she's got mainly clothes on in this movie. The whole time she has clothes on, yes. Put on more clothes. Mm -hmm. And he would just say, we're getting out of here and we're going to get yourself out of this situation, this bad life that you're in. He would fly her, he would pay for everything, he would put her through school, and this movie would turn out to be a prequel to The Breakfast Club, hmm. where, where she's in a much better position, she's in school, uh, and that's, you know, Lorenzo sort of becomes her surrogate father. Sure. That's what Lorenzo would do. What do you think, Mike? WWLD. Well, for me... Uh, Lorenzo would come in a spaceship, he'd crash down, just like Peter Krause did. Mm -hmm. Crash down. And he'd find a couple people, a couple scavengers, and instantly get in a fight. Mm -hmm. He'd fight them, he'd beat on them a bit, but guess what? They'd knock him out. But when he woke up, an old-timey space guy would have turned his old space wreckage into a sweet hog. And he'd ride that hog through the space planet. And he would ride it real good, tassels fluttering in the air. Of course. And he would eventually ride up the stairs of that, that, that castle at the end. And he'd bust through the door and he'd be like, You think this is a gauntlet? I'll show you a gauntlet. And he'd pull out a sawed-off shotgun and just shoot the vain villain in the chest. So that's what the Lorenzo would that, do. That would have been so much better. Yeah, I would have. Space Hunter, what do you rate it? Space Hunter, I give it like, like, ten curled fingers. Like just, like just too lazy to put them all the way up. I like that. I like that a lot. I'm gonna kind of play off of that if you mm -hmm. don't mind. I don't mind. I notice here on the cover that Peter Strauss's character, uh, what's his damn character's name? Wolf. Wolf? Huh? Why do they call you Wolf? That's my name. Wolf is holding the gun up, and I'm just going to replicate his hand for my rating. One finger, three half fingers, and a thumb. <laughs> Fair enough. That's, that's my rating for Space Hunter. Not good. That's not good. Well, well that being said, Paul, mm -hmm. it's been a delight talking to you about this movie. You know, I've really enjoyed spending time with you in outer space. And by the way, well. thank you for cooking this... Garbage? It, well, <laughs> it's technically maybe food. Thank you for it. Mm. You know? I'm sorry about it. Well, well it's not your fault. Well... That being said, I'm a Space Mike Hayes. I'm Space Paul Brooks. Thank you for watching. Make sure to follow us on Facebook. I love the Facebook. I love the Twitter. And we will see you next time on B-Movie Mania! Like into outer space.